Here we go, guys. We are back. So get those glasses high in the sky because FOC has returned. So you, that means only one thing. It's time for Last Call. What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we are back. That's right. It is time for Last Call. Comics are back in motion again, so we are talking about books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday night, May 25th. So make sure you get those online orders in. Contact your LCS. Once again, that full list is going to be available on simplemanscomics.com. And speaking of simplemanscomics.com, make sure you go over there and check out. We have that giveaway for that X-Men number one, Ji Hung Lee, Virgin variant, that closes Wednesday on the site. So make sure you go over there, check it out. Eight ways to enter. And it's a gorgeous cover, isn't it, Jack? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. That definitely, definitely a big cover. Highly chased on the secondary market and courtesy of frankiescomics.com. But with that being said, we're going to start. Last call with our first pick this week. We are talking right out of Boom Studios. We are talking about Power Rangers number four. 50 is a big issue that's one to pay attention to because it has some great variants for it. Well, yeah, this is the culmination of that Necessary Evil storyline that we have been talking about. This is what it's been leading up to. And we are talking about a monumental event. And it's only right that we kick off this type of event as we make the return to New Comic Book Day. And yeah, you mentioned some high ratio variants. So on top of the reader buzz for this one, on top of uh, undoubtedly those that will be collecting those Goni Montez helmet variants, as well as those Christopher Anka trading card variants, there is an excellent Jamal Campbell connecting cover variant set, as well as some high ratio variant from Inyuk Lee. Here's another one that's hitting last call this coming Monday. And this is one that has gained a lot of buzz. Boom had that surprise announcement for this. And we're talking about James Tinian with his new creator owned series, Wind. This is another one that has some great variants as well, right? Right. Yeah, we knew this was coming as an original graphic novel. And then all of a sudden we're getting a issue number one floppy dropped on us at the last second. Really caught the industry by storm. A lot of attention on this book. James Tinian is obviously red hot with the creation of Punchline and some hot new Batman characters on the way for DC Comics. But this is all about Boom Studios. And, you know, you got the first look deal with Netflix. So that's going to automatically get speculator attention. But add in a red hot 1 in 25 Peach Wamoko variant cover. And the next thing you know, you've got speculators and investors as retailers alike going crazy. Now, be cautious because there are a lot of pre-sales on eBay right now for like 25 book lots. Now, when you see that, you know that people are playing the game to get those variant covers. So definitely watch out and avoid those paying those early high prices for that MoCo variant. But the demand is strong right now. There is no hotter cover artist and there is no hotter independent comic publisher. Jack just mentioned that there is no hotter independent comic publisher and that's about right because we're going three in a row with Boom Studios and we're talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five but not only that but this is also the culmination the last issue of this mini series right Jack? Yeah, it is. And it's really unfortunate that the momentum of this series got kind of broken up by this whole pandemic situation and the eventual shutdown of all distribution of brand new comics, because this was a series garnering major reader buzz. You know, you're talking about a lot of events that went on here from the uh, Turtle Rangers to, you know, the, the battle with Shredder and the Power Rangers versus the Ninja Turtles and everything in between. Those Goni Bantes helmet variant covers have been highly, highly sought after. And you know what? It's going to continue with this one because on top of the regular A, B, C, D, E type variants, we also have the FOC variant. But then we've got the 1 in 25 Goni Montez incentive, a 1 in 50 incentive, as well as a one per store special 
thank you variant. So there's going to be a lot of variants. They're going to be highly chased. And if you go back and look at what some of these past issues, what some of the higher ratio, as well as those one per store variants have garnered on the secondary market, there is a lot of money in this property. So yeah, no doubt we just kicked off this last call show with three boom books in a row. But not only do we have books, but we also heard a rumor that they have the old graphic novel called Hexvet, an all ages graphic novel. There's a rumor right now that Nickelodeon has now picked that up to be optioned for an animated series. Yeah, yeah, you know, those strong rumor winds are blowing. And you know, a lot of times where there is smoke, there is fire. But the thing about this is this makes perfect sense because of course, you know, we know that Nickelodeon has that deal for once they premiere shows on the channel, they take them streaming to Netflix. And of course, Boom has the deal with Netflix. The synergy is there. So this makes perfect sense. Here we have a book that's been long talked about, especially with DC. We got that dynamic duo back together with Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, but we have Dark Knight's Death Metal number one. This also has some sweet looking covers for it. Right, yeah, there's a ton of variants coming out for this one. A lot of store exclusives, highly anticipated miniseries. As you mentioned, the reteaming of Snyder and Capullo, who, you know, took the world by storm with their run in the new 52 on Batman and then furthered it through rebirth with this whole dark night metal kind of, uh, you know, sub series that we've now created and it's coming back and coming back strong. So this will be really interesting because the original dark Knights, the original metal stuff, you know, it was really capped off and kind of characterized by first appearances. First appearances that made a major impact on the market. Will we see that this time around? I definitely think so. But will those first appearances stick in the market? Will they be ones that people really are paying attention to? That is the question. And will it follow the same pattern that we saw the first time around where those major first appearances didn't necessarily come in this first issue? We saw them in tie-ins and in later issues. Right. Speaking of which, I think they're supposed to be introducing the Robin King, right? Which right. they did an interview, I think, on CBR or comicbook.com, where both of them said that that's their scariest character they've created yet. But I think anyone would sell that when they're trying to sell books. But either way, <laughs> I'm anxious to read this, see how it turns out. And that first issue hits final order cutoff this coming Monday. So from switching over to Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, we go back over to James Tinney again with his current run on Batman and Batman number 97. Yeah, and this one's going to take place firmly in the Joker War. Um, nothing really here that strikes us as a, you know, uh, tidbit of speculation throughout this solicit. This is a true reader buzz, but again, this is really the point of the last call show at its heart and soul to make sure you, the comic collector, the comic reader, know what to be on the lookout for. This Batman series is red hot and you never know when that rumor mill can hit at the last second. So secure your copies early. Make sure you get your pre-orders in for Batman 97 by Monday. So you're locked in. And then sticking with DC, we're going over with Nightwing number 73. Why is this one on the list? Right before this pandemic, everyone was talking about Punchline, and Punchline shows up in this issue. Yeah, see, we've talked earlier in this episode about tie-ins, and a lot of times when you're talking about major storylines, these kind of tie-in side issues, they can command some of the most money on the secondary market. Oftentimes, because when this pre-order process comes up, they're overlooked but no more because that's what the last call show is here for. So we want to let you know if you're chasing punchline, if you're all in on this Joker war story, if you are investing heavily in this character, make sure you're paying attention to this Nightwing book. It will surely get 
more copies sold than the typical Nightwing book, but it definitely will pale in comparison to what the average Batman monthly title does. So be on the lookout for this issue and a great one to, again, pre-order at your local LCS and make sure you are locked in before Monday. Here we got a new book from Image Comics and it's called A Man Among Ye. I'll be fully upfront with you. I like this. I have this in this video mostly as a reader pick because I'm a huge fan. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but Stars had a show on there for a while called Black Sails. And if you watch Black Sails, one of the characters in there was Anne Bonnie. Anne Bonnie is the protagonist in this series and she was just badass in Black Sails. And that last episode of that series introduced Mary Reed who's also in this series. So I'm all about Pirate Adventure. Hope this book holds up. But either way, I'm interested in reading the first issue. Yeah, and you know, this is the great thing about what's going on right now with the, and why we're here again on the last call show. You know, this is a shortened week and there's uh, not a ton of books, but there are some major books. And this title right here from Image Comics is one that could possibly get overlooked. I think it could be a book that maybe comes in short supply come new comic book day. So if it connects with readers the way it's connecting with you, Brian, it could be one that's tough to grab. So make sure, again, if this is something you're excited about, put that pre-order in. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys watch Black Sales, because if you haven't, you're missing out on a great show on Stars and Amazon Prime, I believe. So here we have Resistance number two. This is that book out of that publisher, AWA. Everyone loved the first issue. It got great reviews. I read it. I really enjoyed it. Great artist, great author. But we had a pandemic in between. I think that might have slowed some momentum. But we got number two. But I also saw number four was on Final Word Cutoff. So I don't know if they're still working out the kinks. But either way, I enjoyed the first issue. So I'm looking forward to getting this one. Yeah, and you know, I, it definitely a little bit confusing. What will be really interesting to see is that the the Upshot imprint had a lot of momentum uh, going into the pandemic. You know, a bit when they had that kind of mass release of number yeah, one their opening salvo was just like. Poof. Right. There there were a lot of people interested and everybody was kind of picking their favorite series. Now, what will be really interesting to see is what series can come back with those issues two and three, which tend to be um, instant drops in readership due to kind of cutting out the speculating and collecting market. It'll be really interesting to see what kind of numbers they can maintain and can they kind of continue on because this that's when things get tough. So if there's a book that you enjoyed, uh, if there was one of those AWA Upshot books, that really struck your fancy, make sure you're pre-ordering, locking those orders in because that's one of those books I could kind of see maybe a retailer overlooking and then and we're deciding against uh, if they're strapped for cash trying to put in that uh, new, new comic book day order. Then here we have Over the Ropes number five. Now we've talked about Over the Ropes on this channel before. We've had the author Jay Salen on here as well to talk about this title. And this is going to be the final issue to this series, at least for now. We don't know if it's going to be another volume or not. But either way, if you're a wrestling fan and you like comic books, this is one book you should definitely be reading. If you don't haven't read it yet and you don't want to get number five, at least get the trade paperback when it comes out. But this has been a great series, and I'm excited to see how it ends. Yeah, and you know, I've heard a lot of people talking wrestling books on a lot of different YouTube channels, but take it from two die-hard wrestling fans, not two spectators, two people who we literally talk about wrestling on a weekly basis, almost daily basis. This is the very best wrestling comic out there. It really is a snapshot of the feel of wrestling kind of in that late 80s, early 90s, end of the territory days uh, kind of uh big boom in the wrestling business and you know it gives you kind of that inside look both the kayfabe uh in the ring as well as the goings on outside the ring so uh really enjoyed that book and i hope we get another volume from mad cave studios
Then going back over to DC for a second, we have Green Lantern. This is the 80th anniversary edition. We've talked about these type books before. While this may not gain her a lot of speculation or secondary market buzz, this is a great reader buzz. I'm a big Green Lantern fan. Jack's a big Green Lantern fan. So we like these type editions, and it's got a bunch of different covers, similar to how they did with the Wonder Woman, the Joker coming up as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've been a big fan of these anniversary editions. Um, and while they, yeah, haven't done much on the secondary market, great PC variant pickups. And I think this one's going to be no different. The 2010s coming with the Jim Lee variant. Ivan Reese in the 2000s is extremely cool. Philip Tan in the 90s. David it's Finch the, in the, the 80s. The Neil Adam in the too, 70s. Right? What's that? It's got the color variant, too, just like the Red Flash. Yep. It's got a green, green lantern. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, it's one of those ones where I think that uh, there's there, there won't be the secondary market buzz, but those Green Lantern fans who have followed this character through the decades are going to enjoy kind of picking their favorite variant cover that really connects to the Green Lantern that specifically they're a fan of. So we just have the one cover up on the screen right now, but if you want to see all the covers, especially the ones Jack was just talking about, we will have them available up on simplemanscomics.com as well as that full final order cutoff list. So make sure you head over there and check that out. If you see something you like, make sure, like we said, you let your LCS or get your online orders in before Monday night. This has been Brian Jack with Simple Man's Comics, and we will see you guys in the next video.